the small rig CT190 Free Blazer travel tripod with fluid head. Rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? I would say this is going to be a comprehensive review of it, but it's not. It's literally just arrived. I'm going to fanboy all over the thing because it's a brand new shiny toy, and I'm probably going to say smooth way too much. Let's have a look at it. Thank you, mate. Yeah, thank you. Cheers, pal. Nice. It comes with this really nice padded bag. The shoulder strap, is, I say it's well padded, so if you're carrying it over your shoulder to a shoot, then no problems there. We've got inside a little pocket on the inside. I don't know if you can even see that on there, because it's really dark. Um, inside that pocket, there's instructions. There's a little bag with a couple of Allen keys and spiky feet to replace the rubber ones. Don't think I'll do that. If you actually focused on that, sometimes the Canon eye detect is too good for its own good, but that worked then. So let's have a look at the tripod itself. That's all that's in there. Apart from these things, do you know what? Who has anyone ever eaten them? The fact that they need to put it on every time. Do not eat silica gel. Natural selection. Let's have a look at the tripod then. So it comes in its folded up state, so we unfold it. <laughs> that's stiff, but that's nice, to be fair. A few different leg positions. I'm guessing that's normal. That's spread. And that's really spread. You get a good strong base off that. That one's quite nice if you want it quite low down to the ground. I'll put it on that for now because it might actually fit on the table. There we go, it's set up. It does feel nice. The head itself is lovely. <laughs> it is smooth. I know that's the idea of a fluid head. But it's better than even I expected. So this knob here allows the tilt. and then locks it off. This one here locks the pan. And if we release the tilt, it just tilts without panning. One lovely feature about this and was the main reason for me actually getting it over the older CT180 model is if I switch, flip this round, you can't really see that, but on the back here, let me get you closer. On the back here, there is a little spirit bubble and the knob underneath that allows you to actually level the head as well. So if you're on uneven ground, you can actually level the head without messing around with the legs and trying to get them straight. Yeah, so without that bubble previously to level it up, you'd be you know, joinking the leg a little bit or extending one leg a little bit more just to get it, it, get it leveled and then adjusting it again. And, then it, and it just became a right pain in the ass. The fact that you can set the tripod down and then use this head to level it up, game changing. I mean, let's be honest, it's not a feature that shouldn't be expected. <laughs> it's just taken so long for video tripods to actually catch up with the fact that you might actually want a level shot. And it gives a massive advantage, certainly for the pan. Tilt would look a bit odd if it wasn't square, but a pan, if the horizon or whatever is in shot isn't level, as it's panning round, you're doing this. And that must, well, it looks horrible. One thing I've noticed though, the Arca Swiss compatible plate on top, which was another reason for getting it because I've got the small rig cage on my camera, which has an Arca Swiss compatible rail on the bottom. It's facing the wrong way. I'll show you what I mean. So on the small rig cage, like you say, there's a, a plate on the bottom there that's built or designed to fit an Arca Swiss style clamp. And this tripod has an Arca Swiss style clamp. Obviously I've switched to my phone now, I can't even see if I'm in frame or not. So it does fit, which is nice. 
problem is it's the wrong bloody way. <laughs> so I can pan okay that way. But if I try and tilt, <laughs> it's tilting the wrong way. Now obviously that's not the end of the world because it does come with its own Arca Swiss plate somewhere. Let's pop that on it. So with the actual proper plate on. It fits perfectly and gives you the, the tilt and pan motion that you'd expect. It just would have been nice to have the ability to not use the plate at all. But hey ho, it is what it is. So the bubbled spirit level, even with the camera on it, is just down here. Now, that's obviously clearly visible, so it's easy enough to adjust and get it completely level, which I can't do with one hand on holding my phone. <laughs> but you see my point, it's not obstructed. So let's get it extended up, back on my camera now. That's where everyone says, oh, the phone footage look well better than the other one. Yeah, get over it. <laughs> you can probably see the lighting shot there, but I can't get far enough back to stand it up without it. The, um, the mechanism for unlocking it is twist lock rather than the flippy locks. I think flippy locks, that's the technical term for them, <laughs> is quicker than these. But that being said, the locking mechanism itself is metal, the legs are all metal. And I'm sure if you get used to it, this is going to be just as quick. But at the minute, I'm used to flipping all three. Oh, cranky. Yeah, you can do them all in one go, I guess, can't you? It's really nice. And <laughs> I'm going to say it again, it is so smooth. So that's probably a normal height, but you've still got two poles of extension to go, two center columns. So that is up to my eye level. And for reference, I'm five foot 11, so just under six foot. Um, and that's perfectly at my eye height. So if I undo this one, we can go even higher. I think that's probably even out of shot now. <laughs> so <laughs> that is um, really high. Not exactly sure how confident I'd be putting a camera on top of there and walking away from it. But I guess if you're near something and you're trying to get over a crowd of people or if you're trying to look over a fence or not spying on your neighbours, that's creepy. <laughs> but you know, you get my point. It's high enough to do more than I would need. And to be fair, if it was any higher, I wouldn't be able to bloody reach it. But yeah, without that second pole extension, that's probably as high as I'm going to need it. Certainly for head on face to face to camera. Couple of other neat features. There's a quarter 20 thread on the side here that you could mount an arm to hold a monitor or a light or a microphone. Small rig do so many different bits and gadgets and stuff, don't they, for, for building kit up. Yeah, I'm impressed. There is also a little concealed hook here for hanging the bag on or any extra weights just to give it a bit more stability. Very nice. A couple of other neat little tricks it's got. This hook plate at the bottom here actually screws out. And with that off and the center pole unlocks, you can actually take the center pole out. What that does mean is you can mount it upside down and get a really low shot. You probably want the legs a little bit higher for that. And obviously you'd flip the image in post, but yeah, the camera would be upside down on there and you could get a really steady shot right low to the ground pretty much touching the ground. While we've got the center pole out, one other thing it can do, the leg with the foam grip twists off, which then allows you to screw that to the center pole. And you've got a monopod, which obviously extends the full length of the pole and gets you pretty high. <laughs> I think you can make that a bit smaller. If you take the actual head off, that will attach to the, the leg itself. Um, I don't think I've ever used a monopod. Don't know if I've got any use for one, but it does it, which is nice. So let's get a camera on it and do some comparisons with the Joby tripod that I'm currently using in terms of its ability to tilt and pan. Should be interesting. So the Joby that I've been using in all these 
videos since has similar features in theory but without the fluid head they just don't they're not they're not executed well so you release this wheel and that frees the head but it frees it in both tilt and pan orientations which causes massive issues when you're actually trying to pan because you're going up and down slightly as well if you lock it a little bit tighter it gives you more control however it's not as smooth so obviously not being a fluid head it gives you you need enough tension on it to pan but it's not smooth compared to a fluid head which look at that one finger will turn that and it is smooth as butter i've said it again no apologies let's get a camera on it so tilt and pan on the joby let's say you can do it oh this is me trying to be as smooth as possible with being a ball head it's different friction in different areas i can loosen that off a bit more but that's what i mean about the wobble on it if i loosen that off a bit more i might as well just hand hold the camera it's not too bad but it does get jerky when you get to the top you put a little bit more friction on it <laughs> it just doesn't do it panning is slightly better with it if we pan now but again you can't control the the tilt when you're panning if i loosen that off a bit more to get to get it a bit freer it's not too bad it's just not as nice and it goes wonky if we compare that to the small rig now so smooth done it again yeah that is just night and day difference hardly any pressure needed and very little resistance it's nice you can adjust the amount of resistance with the knobs on the side to make it a bit tougher so if i lock that off now on tilt and do a pan yeah, apologies for the scene i'm actually panning when it's going to get well blown out when i get towards that window because the sun's decided to come out now but i'm just using one finger to turn that round i'm not worried about tilt because that's locked it's just beautiful in terms of weight it's not light the small rig tripod comes in at 1.78 kilograms which in foreign money is three pound 14 ounces whereas the joby comes in at just over one kilogram 1.1 which is two points or two pounds seven ounces in foreign money okay so let's talk price the small rig tripod that the camera's on now is not a cheap tripod but it is great value. I paid £113 for it. I think it's up to about £133 on Amazon right now. But if you get it at £113, it offers great value. The Joby one that I've been using previously, I paid £80 for that. I think it's at £83 now. So for an extra 30 quid to get the small rig one, it's an absolute no-brainer. Is it Luke Forsyth that says buy it nice or buy it twice? I bought twice. Now don't get me wrong, the Joby has served a purpose. It's great for still shots. It's it's a light tripod. It's easy to carry, and if you even if you extend it by one by one leg extension, you can hold it quite comfortably at arm's length. So for vlogging wise, it, it's actually a really nice tripod. The small rig is a bit too heavy to use as a, a handheld and a stable tripod, whereas this can do both. The main reason I bought this is because I had one of these, which everybody seems to have at some point in their video career, um, the Bendy Joby tripod, but the plate that fits on this actually fits on here as well. So it made sense at the time for me to do this, but I should have done more research. It's a nice tripod, but for the extra £30, that is night and day difference. The alternative I was looking at was Manfrotto's, what do they call it? The Manfrotto B3 Live Travel Tripod with Video Camera Head. 
Again, another <laughs> catchy name. That tripod looks pretty much identical to this one in terms of its functions and features, but it's nearly twice the price at 200 pounds. So for 113, I think it's great value. I do have a Manfrotto tripod that we use at work. Now, we don't use them on cameras. We use them um, for putting a solid steel plate tray table on top to put splices on top of. And the build quality of the small rig is as good, if not better than that particular Manfrotto tripod I've got. So I don't know how they can justify nearly twice the price. Don't get me wrong, the Manfrotto is gonna be a good tripod, but for almost half the price, the small rig does me perfectly. I don't think anyone will notice that I've just closed them curtains behind the camera, will they? So in summary, the small rig CT190 offers great value, in my opinion, for what I need it for. Doesn't mean it's gonna be right for everybody, but personally, certainly compared to other options out there, it seems perfect for me. I just need it to stop bloody raining and work getting in the way so I can actually get out and use it. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.